hello dear students today i will be discussing about the design of bell drives this comes in the model number 5 where we have to learn the design of flat bell drive we have to design the v bell drive and also we have to look into the design of chain drives so in this class i will give you an introduction regarding the various terminologies that we are going to use for the design so the bell drive comes in two different configuration one is the open type and second one is the cross type in the open type of bell drive both the pulleys will be rotating in the same direction and in the case of crossed bell drive the pulleys will be rotating in the opposite directions the center distance is given by the letter capital c this figure is available there in your data handbook figure number 14.1 a and b another important aspect that we have to look into is the design in the design is the speed ratio which is nothing but capital d by small d and small n divided by capital n speed ratio is nothing but the ratio of the larger value by the smaller value here the speed of the smaller pulley is going to be higher compared to that of the larger pulley okay now uh, let us discuss about the uh, various materials that we have to use in the uh, bell drive Uh, materials used means these are the materials that is being used for the fabrication of belt and one more thing see all the letters or the nomenclatures that i have going to discuss here is the same as that of your data handbook i haven't changed anything so whatever might be the nomenclatures used in the design data handbook by mahadevan and balaveer reddy same i have used here capital d is capital n and all those things are same as that in the data book now among the materials that is used for the fabrication of bell drives i have listed five different type of bell drives uh, but these are not the only material there are other type of materials also they all those type of materials are listed in the table number 14.2 page number 305 so the materials which commonly used are the leather belt cotton or the fabric type belt the rubber belt and the belata belt and the camel hair belt there are other type belts also the one which i have listed here i think this belata belt may not be that familiar to you see this belata belt is nothing but they are similar to that of a rubber belt but they use as a belata gum for the while fabricating so they are free from generally alk alkalis uh, they are free from the attack uh, from the acids or even they are free from the oils also that means it can be used in wet conditions the details about the various materials used for the belt has got advantages as well as disadvantages all of you kindly go through some standard textbooks which gives the details about the uh, uh, different type of materials used if you didn't get any kind of materials kindly contact me i can supply the materials So now let us discuss about the advantages as well as the disadvantages of the bell drives. So as we have already told, this is used when the center distance is very high. That means if the center distance between the two shaft is of the order of few meters, then we will be going for the flat bell drive. They are very cheap, requires less maintenance cost, and another important advantage of this bell drive is that. if there is a failure happen during the working it will not affect any of the mechanism associated with the larger pulley or the smaller pulley that is one of the main advantage of the bell drive and coming to the disadvantages the they are not a positive drive that i will explain later and the weight to power ratio is also very small and another important disadvantage is that we need some special techniques to join the belt because as you all know that this belt material given here is not metallic so definitely we need some special mechanisms for the joining purpose so these are some of the advantages and some of the disadvantages kindly refer some textbook okay now comes another important terminology one is a creep and another one is the slip see students usually confuse with these two terminologies the creep and the slip 
So basically, the creep and slip are nothing but the relative motion of belt on the pulley. Both are relative motion of belt on the pulley. But the reasons for this relative motion is completely different. That means, see, when a belt runs over a pulley, it has got a tension side and it has got a slack side. See, when the belt is in the tension side, it experiences an elongation and when it comes to the slack side, it experiences a contraction. Because of this elongation and contraction, the belt will have a relative motion or may have a relative motion between the pulleys and that is termed as uh, creep. And slip is nothing but the relative motion because of the lack of friction. Obviously, this belt drive comes on the friction drives. Friction is a very important term uh, for the transmission of power. So, if there is a lack of friction, then there can have a relative motion between the pulley and belt. That is termed as slip. This slip is expressed in percentages. 1 percentage, 0.5 percentage, 2 percentage like that. The slip is expressed in percentages. Slip is also a very important uh, parameter uh, that is used. But... Um, not that much used in the design now let us discuss about the length of the belt drive in the data handbook you have got two different set of equation for finding the length of the belt drive length of the belt drive is nothing but the length of the belt in the tighter side plus length of the belt in the slack side plus the length of the belt which runs over the pulley if you sum all these four that contribute to the total length of the belt drive now let us discuss about the ratio of belt tensions. I think this equation is a very familiar equation which is nothing but T1 by T2 is equal to e to the power of mu theta where T1 is nothing but the tension in the tight side and T2 is the tension in the slack side. But you may not be familiar with the alternative form of this equation which is nothing but sigma 1 by sigma 2 equal to e to the power of mu theta. Sigma 1 and sigma 2 are nothing but the stresses in the tighter side and the stress in the slack side. Now, now another very important aspect that you have to consider while designing is the centrifugal tension. This is a very very important uh, term uh, that we have to use while the design of the belt drive. The reason why we are going for the centrifugal tension is nothing but we are selecting a particular material as the belt material. So it has got a weight density and this particular belt is running over the pulley at some speed. Definitely a centrifugal force will act on the belt which will try to take the belt away from the pulley. So this centrifugal tension tries to take away this belt from the pulley. So the net tension that is available in the tight side and slack side is nothing but T1 minus Tc and T2 minus Tc. So the alternative form is what? Sigma 1 minus Sigma C and Sigma 2 minus Sigma C. These equations are given in your data handbook uh, which is nothing but 14.3 C and 14.3 D. Some confusions can happen while solving the problem and that confusion is something but which value of mu and which value of theta you have to choose because if you have got two different friction value in the larger pulley and the smaller pulley you, you will have different values of theta in the larger and the smaller pulley so definitely a confusion will come <coughs> where in which this mu theta value selection of mu theta value so when you design it So, kindly select the lower value of mu theta. If mu l theta l is smaller than mu s theta s, then go for the smaller value. So, that is the main important criteria that you should remember when you go for the design. The reason for selecting the smaller value is nothing but, see if you have a smaller mu theta value, definitely this ratio is going to be smaller. So, if you have a ratio smaller, definitely the difference between the tension will be high. So, the torque is nothing but T1 minus T2 into R. So, you will be having, you can have a higher 
torque transmitting capacity that is the reason why we are going for the selection of smaller among these two okay now just for your information we have got a condition for the maximum power transmission this is not that important for the design but the condition is nothing but tc is equal to t max by 3 or it can be t1 by 2 please don't confuse with t max and t1 this may not be the same okay now this initial tension this is a very important term that we have to use the initial tension is root of t1 plus root of t2 is equal to 2 into root of t0 that is given in the equation 14.8 this is a very important equation because see when we assemble a belt we have to give some initial tension without which it will not work properly so that initial tension value is very much needed because in your tighter side when you start the system your t0 t1 value have to be reached from the t0 and the opposite has to happen in the t2 so so initial tension is very much required for the belts when we assemble it and we will be considering this initial tension also while designing it so that's all for the uh, introductory class in the next uh, class i will be purely discussing about the design procedure along with the design procedure initially i will give you a brief uh, description about the data handbook the values the equations the tables the figures that is given in your data handbook i will explain all those things in the next video thank you